In this video, we start off by working on a Regen C13, but then this truck comes in and has a much more interesting problem. It's got some fuel problems that end up being extremely complicated. And what do we find? Well, just gonna watch a video to find out. Hey guys, Josh with the Update Channel. It is Monday morning. We got the Trash Fire International in there that's still on hold, seeing if we're gonna get approval. See a little bit of a sunrise going on here. Thank you, daylight savings time. We also have a LEE, which is a Regen C13 that got towed in Friday. I actually have no idea what we're doing on that. So let's go plug into that and see what the heck's going on with it. So this is our C13 with an LEE serial number. C13s only came with LEE or KCB serial numbers and KCBs are the previous version, which were much better. These have full regen systems, CATS version of an EGR system, and the ones in international and Freightliner chassis were, as you can see, quite difficult to work on. So what's going on with this one? Well, this is me just looking it over. It was towed in. Now this is Friday, or it was towed in Friday evening, but this is Monday morning where we're looking at it. I always look over everything before I start on anything, before I even plug in usually, just to see if something weird, like a big coolant leak or something's going on. It's always good to just do a quick visual for safety reasons too, you don't know what the heck you're walking into. So plug in and here is what we notice immediately. Engine oil pressure low, least and most severe. Also we got some shutdowns. So that's bad news, right? This could end up being huge major problems. But you always have to remember that if you have a like a high coolant temp or low oil pressure, it's always good to check that the sensors are working. So you wanna check for actual diagnostic faults, not just system faults. So if you notice engine oil pressure, voltage below normal. So this has sensor faults. And when you have sensor faults with oil pressure faults, always troubleshoot the sensor faults first. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, Brunt Boots actually sent me a pair of boots. I'm trying them out. They're not paying me to say this, but just thought I'd let you know. They're pretty comfy. I'll uh, have to give you an update in a few months what I think about them. So that is our fuel filter housing there, but you have to remove that to get to the oil pressure sensor. And you can see our codes here with the filter housing removed. We've got two more codes for fuel system related codes because it's been removed. Now, this sensor is probably one of the hardest sensors to get to, as well as this one, which is your IVA oil pressure sensor, and that one was also coating. So basically, the two hardest sensors were coating. Now, what I've done here is notice it says voltage above normal for engine oil pressure now. That's good, because what I did is I unplugged the sensor. If you have a voltage below normal, and you unplug the sensor, and it goes to voltage above, that basically tells you the sensor is bad. Now, the IVA oil pressure sensor fault which I'll be discussing in a second, see, see it's unplugged. That one, I plugged in a new sensor and that code went away. Also the connector needs replaced. So that one's actually pretty easy. And right when I found this out, this happened. So a little bit of change of plans here. This truck just showed up. Car hauler, I haven't actually worked on one of those in a while. And what we're gonna be doing to that is it's got intermittent, not really rough running, but he said the power's intermittent. Sometimes it runs fine, sometimes it doesn't. So we got an intermittent problem there. How many times are we gonna say that word? Let's find out. He gave me a few hints that some might be up with the fuel system. So let's look at that and see what we can find out. So looking at his fuel restriction gauge here, and the fuel is hot, he just drove in, and it's sitting about three inches of mercury. Always made me wonder why they signify mercury by HG. No H in mercury, but anyway, you rev it up, it's getting close to five and you can see Seven is actually in the red, so it seems fairly restricted. Let's bring her on in the shop. Now, working on car haulers is always interesting because if you ever have to get under a car hauler, you'll know what I'm talking about. They are basically factory low riders. They sit so low to the ground, you usually can't even get a jack under the front axle. They're tricky. Also, pulling a cylinder head on one can be tricky because usually they have the rack above the engine so sometimes they're pretty uh take some thought to work on them so the engine everything of course doesn't change it's just located a little lower now he was saying his primary fuel filter which is a fuel water separator he runs cat filters is never full and here we are this is right after we pull it in you can see it's only about two-thirds full or some people would say one-third empty but it's 
kind of weird. Usually they're full. Now, one thing I always check when we have an intermittent low power problem is the accelerator pedal position. I've seen this be a cause on multiple engines. People say, hey, you know, for whatever reason, my engine's just not, it's just not pulling as hard as it used to. And what do you know? You check the throttle just by taking it to the floor and it's only going to like 80% or something. So that's always one thing to check. So what we're gonna look at on the far right, 100%. So his throttle pedal is reading 100%. So we can eliminate that. So I've got all sorts of hoses and clear lines trying to test here. And I've took, taken off his sensor for fuel restriction and put my own gauge on there. I've got another vacuum gauge I'm gonna end up putting on. And we're running at idle to see our fuel pressure, which is about 78 PSI. Also, I've got this clear line, and if you notice, there's lots of bubbles in its fuel, which, in my opinion, is not a good thing. Now, CAT actually has like kind of something to follow for that, and we'll talk about that later, but that's my other restriction gauge. You can see it's showing about, at idle, eh, two to three. So remember, the fuel is hot here, so it's gonna be a little more if it's cold, but here's a close-up on those bubbles. Seem like quite a bit to me. And according to Cat, you can have a couple little bubbles. You just can't have a ton. And you can't have huge bubbles all the time either. And this is revved up at about 1500 RPM and we're only about 88, maybe 90 PSI, which that's pretty low. These C15 generally like to run about 100 PSI, it seems. And we're pulling about four pounds of restriction. Or four inches, I should say, not four pounds. You can see the bubbles there. As you rev it up, the bubbles get a little bigger and you get a lot more of the smaller ones. And that's coming out of the filter housing into the transfer pump. So to me, I'd say that seems weird. That seems like a problem. He's also got, like I said, that filter's never full and the restriction gauge is always getting a little high. So what I did is I put a clear line into the filter housing to see if we were getting bubbles there. There are no bubbles going into the filter housing, but we're getting bubbles out of the filter housing. So what does that tell you? It tells you that there is either it's pulling air or we've got the heaviest restriction in the filter housing. I'm gonna pull that off and check it out and make sure that, you know, there isn't anything destroyed on the inside of it. This week's Destruction of the Week, first one comes from Jerry, and this gear is out of a PTO, and it's pretty broken, but look at the PTO housing itself. Oh man, that sucker is pretty much not reusable. Now this is a 3512, and if you zoom in, you'll notice that one of these holes looks different than the other. Yeah, threw a rod on the 3516, look at that, it smashed out the side of the block, the oil pan. Major damage, folks. Uh, this is going to be an expensive repair, and this these pictures are from Paul. Thanks to both Jerry and Paul, and let's get back to work. So this is with the filter housing removed. Now this insert actually remove can be removed, which is kind of unusual. Most filter housings those don't easily just unthread like that. But from what I can see, there's no cracks, at least no visible cracks. The filter housing itself, the ports don't seem real big, but to me, I don't see any physical problems with it. Also, with the lower fuel pressure, I told the customer, hey, it'd be a good idea to upgrade the spring to the higher pressure spring. They seem to run a lot better like that. So we put the filter housing back on. We updated the spring, and this is at idle. Now notice what the PSI is now, about 92. Still got bubbles coming out of that primary filter housing, though. And we're going to rev it up and see what our pressure is again. And if you look at that, our fuel pressure, the one on the right, is sitting over 100 PSI, so that's good. Specifications usually about 95, but they tend to run better at higher than that. So, still got bubbles there on our clear line out of the filter housing. And that little plug you can see on the transfer pump, that's where the spring goes. I pulled that one off. It's easier if you pull the transfer pump off. Now, what I found, I was this one made me think, folks, because I don't know what the heck's going on here. And I found this, part number's on the bottom. This filter housing has an update from CAT, the 2802698. And here's the changes. It's supposed to be for inlet filter restrictions, hard starting, stalling. And also I found this DAVCO sheet, or actually I should say my parts guy did, but basically it talks about the difference between air bubbles and vapor bubbles. And I have never 
been told this or found this out before, but I'm really glad I did. Because basically, and DAFCO really explains this, and of course, they make fuel filters, and I'm sure they've done a lot more research on fuel systems than I have, but basically, small air bubbles out of your primary fuel filter are okay. Those are called vapor bubbles. And that's from air, as they call it, entrained, but basically trapped in the fuel, and when it gets to a very, when it gets below atmospheric pressure, the bubbles come out. One thing to test if they're air bubbles, which would be, it's actually pulling air in the system by a leak, is to check your return. Does your return line have air in it? This is the return line. No air. So if you've got air coming out of the filter housing but not in the return, that means they're vapor bubbles and you should not worry about them. Now that does not explain why the filter isn't full and it doesn't explain why the restriction gauge is going high, but it does explain the little bubbles. Now this is the updated filter housing that I was talking about from CAT, and you can see the ports are way bigger. The tube that pulls fuel out of the filter is much longer. Also the port in the tube is much bigger. So this is supposed to fix the inlet filter restriction, at least according to CAT, and this housing's not actually very expensive. I think it was $50 or $60. And we're gonna run the bigger filter because the larger filter has more filtering element and it should help with restriction. The new housing though is O-ring boss, not pipe thread, so I had to find some fittings. And I found some fittings, I had to drill one out for the restricting gauge. And you can see here, it's, I prefer the O-ring boss over pipe because you can position them better. You can see my drilling and tapping there, seem to work okay. No leaks, and hopefully this helped our restriction. So let's test it out. Now the, f the fuel is cold, so it might be a little higher, but I'm hoping it's a lot lower. It's not! It's actually higher now with the higher return spring on the transfer pump and the, the high flow filter housing, which to me makes, it makes no sense. I, I don't know, there's no restriction before the filter, but, which I did test, the filter is still not filling up all the way. It's only filling about two thirds of the way still. And the customer said, hey, I actually had changed the transfer pump before and the spring, the higher pressure is actually causing a restriction. So he had me put the old spring back in and it dropped the restriction, which to me makes no sense. So what was the problem? The ECM. We ended up putting a test ECM on it while we were waiting on parts for the fuel system. And he test drove it. And he said, hey, it's running perfect now. So literally the ECM was the cause of his low power complaint. I never did figure out why it the restriction gauge was going up and why it wasn't filling. Uh, real head scratcher here, folks. Maybe someone knows in the comment, but here's what my thoughts are. And special thanks to Martin, Ahmed, Terry, Dustin, and Roman for donations at adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. And as always, thanks for watching.